We've heard you say that the response of the big powers is not serious, that it's insulting to small countries. What's going to happen if it continues like this? On the economic side, the world is already in a bad mood. We have the resources today, both in terms of the economy and in terms of technology, to solve many of the challenges that we're posed with by poverty and inequality. On the climate side, the world is getting into a bad mood. Nations around the world that are already being affected by climate change need the empathy, the solidarity, the meeting them at least halfway of the road from other nations for them to be able to adapt to climate change and lower their carbon emissions. So this is a great opportunity to work together. The North can provide the technology, the finances, their resources and wherewithal that is needed in the South to change our trajectory from high carbon to low carbon, to continue on a different path of development, and therefore create the opportunities for a much better world. If we don't move in that direction, the world will also get into a bad mood with respect to climate. We've heard a lot here about moral leadership and the importance of moral leadership. Why do you think it is that rich countries are failing to show that? Rich countries need to show empathy. They need to show they care. They need to show a sense of urgency with respect to addressing challenges that are not only of the developing world, they are their challenges as well. At the end of the day, climate change affects us all. Governments need to think about their long-term responsibility and not only about being re-elected every four years. Yes, they will not be able to fix everything with respect to climate change in their four-year period, but yes, they can also make an important contribution for that to begin signaling a new road. We need leadership that is responsible, that calls the shots and takes the actions which we all know are the ones we need to combat climate change. And you expressed your sympathies with the Occupy Wall Street movement and called for an occupied Durban. What would that look like and what could it achieve? The riots of London and the indignados of Madrid and the now growing global Occupy Wall Street movement is a sign of the frustration felt by many given we are not addressing their economic needs. So with respect to climate, maybe we need an Occupy Durban, a sit-in by the delegations of those countries that are most affected, that are going from one COP to the next COP to the next COP without getting positive and concrete responses on the issues that they want dealt with, which are transfer of technology, which are new financing mechanisms to be able to finance adaptation and combat climate change, which are everything it takes to move development in a new direction. The world has done that before. With respect to telephones, we were able to leapfrog from nothing to cell phones in the developing world. We didn't have to bury wires of copper in the ground to provide fixed telephones to every home and building. With respect to climate, we can leapfrog from where we are today to a new global low carbon economy that will provide the jobs, the opportunities for entrepreneurship and for capital deployment that we need to get out of the economic crisis in which we're in. As you've said, we've seen some inspiring political protests over the last few years, especially the, the Middle East uprisings, the Arab Spring. Do you think there's the potential for a climate spring? What's it going to take to motivate a, a global climate justice movement? I hope we will be able to address these issues before we see an uprising with respect to climate. But history of humanity shows us that it has always been big crisis 
that have made us move. I hope we have learned those lessons. I hope we don't need a crisis today. We are already witnessing important amounts of suffering caused by climate change. That should be enough to get us acting. And here at the Climate Vulnerable Forum, we've seen poor countries taking the lead. What do you hope will come out of this meeting? I would want to see the most vulnerable countries of the world speaking with one voice, carrying a single message of need for action to Durban, and having the developed world meet them at least halfway with our resources, with technology that will create increased markets for their products as well, and for all of us to be able to work on this as we move forward in our development. Jose, thank you for speaking to us.